Hello guys. My name is Scott. Here are the 12 verbs are found in the Bible. They keep you healthy. Number 1. Anise. The seeds of this plant are good for your health. They were used by the people in biblical times. You can treat digestion problems or even fever with them. You can also consume them or make a tea out of them to treat flu, colds, and cough. Number 2. Bitter herbs. These were used by the Israel during the Passover feast. They ate meat and bread, dipping them in the bitter herb sauce. These are great for your joints and digestion, as well as for kidneys or various infections. Number 3. Aloe Vera. It can treat various rashes on the skin, inflammation, dryness, and other problems, as well as burns and sores. Number 4. Balm. It is something people get from the bomb tree. It had an amazing fragrance, and was used in the temple service. It can also be used, on wounds for medical purposes. Number 5. Cassia. They made oil out of it, and utilized for the biblical anointing. It smells good and can be great for your hair. Number 6. Cumin. It's a great food addition. The cumin seeds keep your heart healthy. Number 7. Cinnamon. You can use it as a spice or as oil. It positively affects your brain, and maintains healthy levels of glucose in the blood. Number 8. Garlic. It kills germs, supplies the vitamins to your body needs, and keeps up the health of your gums. Garlic has many healing properties, and it spices up the food. Number 9. Mint. It is good for your fresh breath. It can help to cope with fever and heal the stomach. It mint calms your nerves. Number 10. Saffron. This herb is even capable of helping people to survive cancer. In the old times, it was used as the spice and as a coloring agent. Number 11. Myrrh. It was utilized in the temple and for anointing the bodies of the dead people. Today, it can be used to tame ear pain, sores or a sore throat. Number 12. Mustard Seed. You can use it for your hair, as a conditioner, or to get rid of the muscle pain. And of course, it is a tasty addition to your food. Plus, you can use it to wash the dishes. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and share this video with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Holy Herbs is a book on herbs. The herbs have been picked from the verses of the Bible. Herbs, spices and trees were imported from regions as diverse as India, China, East Asia, Africa and the Middle East. This book explores the historical, cultural, religious and scientific connection between the East and the West. 23 of the most important trees, herbs and shrubs mentioned in the Bible have been discussed in detail in this book. These plants were used as incense in temples, for fragrance, as food and in medicine. Most of the plants are still used extensively in many parts of the world, broadly into five cultural regions. One, the Indus Valley Civilization, which was in India. Then we had China, Mesopotamia. We had Pharaonic Egypt and Greece. Later on, Greece, Egypt, and Mesopotamia were largely occupied and formed the empire of Rome. India and China continued to dominate Asia till they were colonized by the European colonial powers. The Indus Valley Civilization began somewhere around 2600 BC. By that time the civilization evolved into settled life. People had started living in urban planned cities. This civilization covered the western, northwestern parts of India. The Indus Valley people were active traders and mariners. They exported herbs, clarified butter, 
timber, exotic animals to Mesopotamia, Greece, Egypt, herbs, spices, food, minerals were transported from the Indus Valley ports. These were brought to the cities from the whole of India. Some of their produce was consumed locally but a lot was exported. Goods were transported in boats to the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea region. The coastline of the Indian subcontinent was dotted with ports. Ships hugged the coastline stopping at the end of the day for rest and free stocking. The journey from India to Mesopotamia or the Red Sea took over a year to complete. Later on in the first century AD, the monsoon trade wind route was discovered. This enabled the journey time to be slashed down to a week. East Asia too was connected via India to Mesopotamia and Egypt. This was connected both by land and sea. Indian ports were transshipment ports for goods coming from East Asia. Herbs and spices were the main commodities that were produced in the East Asian region. The land of Punt, which included the countries of Somalia, Ethiopia and Sudan, were producers of herbs and raisins too. They exported most of their products to Egypt, Greece and later on the Roman Empire. The Silk Road connected China with Persia, India, Mesopotamia, Egypt and Rome. The importance of herbs and spices continues to endure down the millennia even till today. This is just a preview. You would see and learn more on the spices and herbs and their history in ancient times till today in this book, Holy Herbs. As for myself, I'm a freelance columnist, an ex-member of the Indian Forest Service and a business consultant. My book, Holy Herbs, is available on Amazon.in and in stores in India. We expect to release this book in other parts of the world later in this year. I can be reached through my website sudhiralualia.com and I will be happy to receive comments, reviews and suggestions on this book. Thank you. Three. Take thou also unto thee three principal spices of liquid medicine 30, 22 through 33. Take thou also unto thee three principal spices of liquid myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet cinnamon half as much, even 250 shekels, and of sweet calamus, 250 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of olive oil, a hen. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, compound after the art of apothecary. It shall be a holy anointing oil. In some biblical translations, liquid myrrh is referred to as pure myrrh. Pure myrrh is the gum which comes out of the balsam plant. It was known as the painkiller tree by the ancient nomads. Cinnamon is also an ancient herbal medicine. Cinnamon is mentioned in several ancient pharmacopias and is certainly used by traditional healers. Cassia is also a type of cinnamon commonly known as Chinese cinnamon. It also has medicinal properties. Based on the Hebrew used within the holy oil, it is most likely that the rolled bark of the plant was used. Sweet calamus in some Bibles is also translated as fragrant cane. Calamus was banned by the FDA in 1968 for use in food and medicines. Calamus contains upwards of 75% acerone. Acerone is a poison which has been shown to cause cancer, affect heart, kidney and liver functions. Why would God specify a poison to be used in the holy anointing oil? Could it be that some churches today are anointing the heads of babies with poison? Did God mandate that the holy anointing oil contain a poison? 
The original Hebrew for calamus is kanabosim. Some translations have this as fragrant cane or aromatic cane. Some researchers have argued that this is actually sweet cane or sugar cane, although the term sweet does not occur in the original manuscripts. In the Hebrew, terms such as Elohim is rendered plural. So in the Hebrew, cannabosim is also plural. The singular then is rendered cannabis. Cannabis sounds remarkably close to the modern day word cannabis. Could it be that cannabis was the plant given by God to be used in the holy anointing oil? According to the Webster's New World Hebrew Dictionary, the current Hebrew word for hemp is cannabis. Cannabis has certainly been cultivated since the beginning of recorded history. The use of cannabis by humans precedes the writing of history. Uh, and in fact, most of history was written on paper that was made out of cannabis. So uh, it, there's maybe some relation to that. But um, basically what we do know on that regard is that we have evidence that goes back 10,000 BC, 10,000 years to 8,000 BC that simultaneously, somewhat simultaneously, in two parts of the world, people began cultivating cannabis and using it for fiber purposes. The use of cannabis for rope, sails, and rigging into ancient times are well documented. Imagine the amount of cannabis rope it would have taken to construct the Temple of Solomon. What other way was there to construct ropes at that time, which could lift the weights not only of the Temple of Solomon, but in fact the pyramids themselves. In Egypt they were using uh, flax to make the linens that were used on the mummies, but that they were using hemp for making ropes. Cannabis was thought to be an, in a European word, specifically of Scythian origin. The Scythians were largely responsible for the spread of cannabis into Europe. A lot of people uh, would argue, well how does an Indo-European root end up in a, uh, uh, the Hebrew language because you know can can cannabis is definitely from an Indo-European root. An Indo-European language is basically the, the root language of all our, most of our modern languages. Uh, um, Hebrew is independent of this. Um, and uh, that is because uh, uh, it was an item of trade and as items of trade uh, it retains the same name from region to region unlike stuff that can be found in any locality like water or a cow or weed or whatever which has its own uh, name in each place items of trade generally come with a name that they uh, retain from their place of existence and we have other examples of this in uh, the Bible as well in fact in Exodus 30:23, where we have the reference to Cannabosum we have a reference to kinnaman, which was the Hebrew counterpart of cinnamon, which was also a very popular item of trade. The scythe was an invention of the Scythians used for the harvest of cannabis. This has come to us in the legends of the Grim Reaper. One of the main factors that ties us all together is this group known as the Scythians. Some people say Scythians. Uh, I prefer Scythians because there's a tool that's called a scythe, which uh, we have today that comes from them and uh, what it is is uh, whereas a sickle has a small blade and a handle on it and it's used for cutting wheat uh, the scythe is a long handle a long blade if you ever see the grim reaper he's got a scythe that he's carrying and the grim reaper is, symbolizes that at the end of our lives that just as people go out and harvest the fields of hemp the green the grim reaper comes and harvests people at the end of their lives uh, the scythians invented that tool for harvesting cannabis. Herodotus, an early Greek ethnographer in the 5th century BC, wrote of the Scythians and their use of cannabis. Now, the Scythians get their main mention and uh, historical um, reference out of Herodotus. Herodotus, of course, was an early ethnographer. Um, he said that it was his duty to record what he was told. He didn't necessarily believe everything. Along the southern tip of the Arabian Peninsula comes the most prized frankincense in the entire world. Grown high on the grid plateaus, frankincense comes from a very low, twisted, bush-like tree that lacks a central trunk, with its many prickly branches, pinnate leaves, that extend every which way. Its sacred gum is obtained by slashing the roots 
in the branches, making a deep incision and peeling back a narrow strip of its silverly bark, allowing the milky white substance to ooze out. Once the air hits the substance, the sticky gum hardens into lumps. These lumps are either left on the tree for two to three weeks to dry and then gathered, or it's stored in mountain caves to dry for several months. Sap from the frankincense plant is collected until the middle of September when the rain showers in the harvest season. Caravans of camels carry this precious and rare spice packed in sheep and goat skins in quantities of 20 to 40 pounds through the bleak Arabian desert, west along the Red Sea coast, a trip that takes months. In the Red Sea regions, frankincense is not only valued for its sweet odor when burnt, but its blazing lumps also serve as illumination instead of an oil lamp. Its fumes also serve as an excellent insecticide with its powerful bouquet, giving off no known toxicity. Frankincense resins continue to be used for religious rites, medicines, and perfumes. When combined together with other spices such as cinnamon and cassia, they create a myriad of scents.